Good morning. It's August outside. It's hot. So I thought I would do the second part of my sunflower field on Fort Leonard Wood, the bake. This is where I'm going to show you how I edit. Now, if you want to see the first part, I'm going to try something fancy here. I'm going to try to put the link, whoop, wrong side, try to put the link up here. If you haven't seen how I took the pictures, I call that Sunflower Fort Leonard Wood, the, the uh, take. So it's a two part series. The first part is where I actually take the picture and the second part is where I edit or call it the bake. So let's go right into Lightroom and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Here's my focus stacking and uh, what focus stacking is, is I shoot, uh, usually focus the camera in the foreground and then on the Nikon D850 it'll take I think I have it set for 10 photos and it moves the focus further into the composition. So let me uh, look at the first photo that zoomed too much. Uh, let me lower the zoom right here just a little bit to 100% and let's pick some place in the foreground. Okay. Okay, right here you can see that the stem is in sharp focus. Now let's go to the next one. Now you can see that it shifted focus from here to the background and a little further back to the trees and a little further towards the clouds and then the final one is all the way back and I don't know that we even need that one so I'm going to uh, I'll go ahead and use all of them. The single photo that I'm going to edit is this one here. You can't see it it's lost in the shadows it exposed for the sky but I want to show you a couple new tools in Lightroom that are just fantastic so let's start off with this photo so what I normally do is I pick one of the middle I have six here so I pick one of the middle ones and I do uh, normal um, processing now I have a preset there are certain things we do to our photos all the time and I call mine right over here normal development so I'm going to click on that and it does it it uh, takes down the highlights opens up the shadows adds some vibrance adds some texture and clarity it um, on can't lens correction I have both those set that's something I do every time effects I don't have any vignette because I like to approach the vignette uh, differently on each photo and then details I have a little sharpening a little masking so my approach is well what do I like what don't I like so let's go to the basic panel first and I'm gonna take down my highlights a little bit and open up my shadows and then I'm gonna brighten the whole thing just a little bit now here's another trick that I learned if you're on max if you hold down the shift and click the whites it'll give you a white point if you do the same on blacks double click on the blacks now I have my histogram touching both sides so let's do a backstroke shortcut before and after. Here's after, before, after, before. Looks pretty good. Now I'm working on a laptop, so I'm going to make the image a little lo larger. Now I'm not worried about focus. What I'm looking on is uh, overall exposure. Now, uh, I don't know how recent this update is, but you have underneath the... Um, what do they add that masking tool they have select subject let's see if it'll pick just the sunflower up front yeah I did it it said okay this must be the subject so what I'm gonna do is brighten that I'm going to uh, even though I won't see it in this one I'm gonna give it a little more texture a little more sharpness and eh, just a smidgen of saturation that's the one you can do a, overdo a lot and then I'm going to uh, add a little more sharpness now let's go to the plus sign here in our mask tool and select sky and it did a good job there so what I'm going to do is let's darken the sky a little bit what I really like to do is use dehaze on it and I'm going to add a little blue that'll be just the opposite color of this yellow okay so I like that so what I'm going to do now is select all the other images and I'm going to say sync and it's going to ask me if I want to do the mask also that's a new 
very new update, which is a good thing. So I'm going to synchronize all that. Now what's going to happen is it's going to, um, all the adjustments I made, it's going to add it to all the other ones. So I'll wait for that to happen. And now what I'm going to do is I'm looking down here and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say edit in and I'm going to put it open as layers in Photoshop. So now this is going to take a minute. I'm going to let it open all those images as separate layers in Photoshop. Okay, so here I am in Photoshop, and if you look at my layers palette, I've got all my layers lined up here. Well, I have them stacked on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is shift-click the bottom one, so I select all of them. Then I go up here to edit, and it's different on PC. I think it's under file, and I go to auto-align layers. So I'm going to auto-align these. Auto-selected, I'm going to click OK. Okay, so now they're all stacked around each other. You have this little white area around it. That's where it moved a little bit. And you can see as I click through these, shutting off the eyeball, that it, oh, that's the bottom layer, that the sky, if you watch the clouds in the sky, they're moving while this exposure is going on. So what I'm going to do now, I've got them all, um, eyeballs on on all of them. I'm going to go back to edit. And I'm going to go Auto Blend Layers. Now in this box it says Stack Images and Seamless Tones and Colors is I leave that cl clicked on. You can click on Content to Wear Fill, but what I normally do is just crop it out in the final picture. So I'm going to hit OK here. Now you notice that in the picture these are out of focus. Now I have the sunflower, the trees are out of focus. Actually the sky is out of focus too. So what it's doing is building masks on each layer. And there you go. Did you see it? Everything's in sharp focus. Now what I do is I go to my last one, scroll down and flatten the image. And then I hit save. Okay, so I'm back in Lightroom, and this is the photo that came in that's focus stacked. How do I know this? If I look at my ending here, it's a Photoshop document. So what I like to do to keep from clutter, and if I go to my next one, you see it changes to a digital negative, DNG. So what I like to do, I like to highlight uh, the PSD, and then click the other photos that made up this focus stack and I like to right click and stack into group and it's less cluttered so now I have a photo now I would crop this and I can still make adjustments to it and do that kind of thing but let's go to the next one so let's go back to this image here okay uh, the, the camera exp I always expose to the right and the camera uh, made sure I didn't clip any of the highlights. And that's what I want to do. So now I'm going to go into Developer. Now I think this, the most powerful tool, and I always say this, is the Crop tool in Lightroom. So I'm going to go to the Crop tool, and I think this would make a nice square format. So I'm going to crop it, straighten it up a little bit, and I'm straightening it up according to the, the scene down here. Okay, so one thing I noticed is that it kind of dark. So my subject is the sunflower. So first thing I'm going to do is do my preset, normal development. That helped. I'm going to brighten it up. Whoop. Probably help if I left it on there. I'm going to open up the shadows. Oh, look. I got lucky and caught a little bee right there. So that's going to be our, our subject. Something like that. Now I'm going to go to the mask tool, and I'm going to just say select sky. It did a good job even around all these um, leaves or dead leaves here. So now I want to bring back detail in my sky. And I'm going to add some blue contrasty colors. I'm going to use the dehaze. Okay, I think I went a little overboard, so I'm going to take this back. And I'm going to do my highlights. And a little darker. Good. Now I'm going to uh, do the double click thing on my whites. Hold down the shift. 
double click whites it didn't do nothing let me try that again oh because I'm in the mask tool so let me get out of the mask tool here we go there now I did it and that gives you good contrast range I'm gonna brighten it up a little more and I think I think the overall is just a little too yellow so I'm gonna cool down the yellow a little more now I want to bring out let's see what happens when I do on a mask add a subject mask okay it picked the subject I'm gonna brighten it up even more I'm gonna add a little more contrast to it a little texture uh, a little clarity and that B is still not coming out so what can I do there so what I'm gonna do is zoom in on the B I'm gonna go up here I'm gonna add a brush uh, right there okay I'm gonna make my brush about the size of the B and what I want to do is I want to bring out the B a little bit so I'm gonna add uh, brightness I'm gonna open up the highlights open up the shadows and I'm going to add some more clarity and texture and some more saturation so now I'm just gonna paint over this B can you see how it's bringing it out okay and I have auto mask set so as long as I keep that that uh, plus sign in the B it's gonna bring just that out so now I'm gonna zoom out again and let's do a before and after before after before after now I want to do a vignette but I want to control the vignette so what I'm gonna do is add another mask I'm gonna use the radial filter graduate whatever you want to call it and I'm gonna drag it right over the sunflower and then I'm gonna pull it out just a little more and uh, I think the feather will be all right so now I'm gonna brighten the flower just a little more and then here's the trick that I like I'm going to and I right click on the mask duplicate and invert mask now it shifted everything outside and outside with the original mask so now I'm gonna darken the outside edges a little bit brighter and darker I'm gonna do it extreme so you can see it here can you see where the mask was and I'm gonna pull it back 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 something like that one more time let's do a before and after before after okay so that's the way I bake those two images if you like this kind of content, please leave me a comment that you'd like to see more of this. And um, if you would, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I don't have that many followers, but who knows, maybe someday I do. I hope this video helps you, and I hope you come back. See ya. Bye.